If you're like me, you've tried a lot of retouching tools over the years, some pretty good, some not so good. Well, today I'm gonna be looking at the latest version of Avoto to see if this really lives up to the hype. Now this is probably the fifth AI retouching video that I've done just this year. And recently I did a big shootout video using four of the most popular retouching tools. And I compared all of those final images head to head. Shockingly, I think Evoto came out as one of the best performing programs from that test. You can watch that video here or go to the link in the description below. And so today I thought, why don't I dive a little deeper into Evoto and show you some of the other amazing retouching tools that you can use. Now Evoto is fairly new. They've been on the market for a few years. And so if you have never heard of them, basically it's a professional retouching suite that can help photographers fix pretty much anything wrong with a photograph. In the shootout video that I released just a few months ago, I primarily focused just on blemish and acne retouching, but Evoto can do so much more than that. If you wanna get 15 free credits and try Evoto for free, go to the link in the description below. Also, F-Stoppers has an exclusive discount with Evoto, so if you wanna save 15% off a year subscription, or if you wanna save 20% off 200 pay-as-you-go credits, use the code f-stop anywhere on their website. So I have a large group of photos here and I'm just gonna go through a few of the most powerful tools that I've been playing around with. To make this video a little easier to digest, I've added annotations below so you can jump around to the retouching tool that you might be most interested in. First, let's start off with acne and skin retouching because it's probably the tool that every photographer needs. It's also extremely time consuming and it's extremely easy to do poorly and make the skin look really plasticky. So on the right here, we have a bunch of different sections of the software. If we just come up here to portrait retouching, the first slider is gonna be face refinement. Now the way Evoto has this set up is they have a master slider for both freckles and acne, but they also have separate sliders for them individually. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bump both of these up to 100%. And the master slider right now is at about 50%. So if I zoom in and do the before and after, you can see that it has reduced everything a little bit, but I can come up here to 100% and that is pretty incredible. Look how big of a difference that is. So with the master slider, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility. I haven't seen that in other software. Usually they just have one slider for each one of these effects. I'm gonna turn the freckles and acne off just so that you can see what some of these other effects are doing. If we go right below that, there's a reduce face shine. Let me just go ahead and turn that up to 100%. And this is really great if you're trying to reduce those specular highlights that sometimes you get on, you know, kind of moist or dampened skin. You can see how big of a difference that is doing here. Let me jump over to another image here. And sometimes when you're taking a portrait of somebody, the dark shadows around the nose and the eyes become a little bit more predominant. I know this happens a lot when I take photos of my son. If we use the dark circle slider, again, I'm moving everything to 100% just to show you what's possible. But if we do the before and after, look how big of a difference that is. Let me go ahead and turn up all of the freckles and acne on this photo just so you can see what that looks like. And a lot of times I like to use the master slider at around 70%. It just allows some of the imperfections to still bleed through just a little bit, which causes the image to look a little bit more realistic. And you can see how big of a difference this makes. For something like headshots where you don't want to completely retouch the skin and make it look totally fake, Offering something like this might be the perfect middle ground where your client's gonna be really happy, it still looks like them, but you also haven't spent a ton of time retouching hundreds of images that you might take in a headshot session. So here's a goofy portrait session that I did with my dad a few years ago, and as you can see, the expression he's giving is really interesting, but it's also creating probably more wrinkles than he had at the time. So let's come down here to facial wrinkles. Let's do forehead wrinkles. Let's go ahead and bring that up to like 80%. And wow, look at that. It has completely removed all the wrinkles on his forehead. Maybe I just dial that down to 25% to make it a little bit more realistic. I can remove his 11 lines, which are the lines that kind of come up above the nose into the eyebrows. You can use the eye wrinkle tool to remove all of the wrinkles actually on the eyelid and around like the crow's feet area. And if he had really strong smile lines, which he doesn't necessarily in this photo, they have a setting here that you can use the left and the right or you can tie them together. And that's gonna diminish this line right here from the nose down into the cheek. There's even a slider for neck wrinkles. Check that out. So for an image like this, I think it's really cool to show all the wrinkles on my dad's face. I think it gives a lot of character, but if you wanted to remove it and just diminish it a little bit just to make him not look so old, well, that's a pretty big difference right there with just a few sliders. 
Now here's a shot from a portrait session where the light is incredibly flat. If I zoom into the model's face, you can just see there's really not a lot of shadows or highlights. It's, it's almost too flat in my opinion. So if you find that you have too flat of light and you wanna add a little contour to the face, maybe you wanna dodge and burn just a little bit, Evoto has something under facial skin called Even and Sculpt, which is going to give you this effect. So the Even slider, it's going to try to even out any imperfections in the shadows and highlights, which is going to make this image even more flat. If I zoom in and turn this on and off, you can see what it's doing. It's just removing some of the strange highlights and shadows that might be on the face. But right below that, we have the sculpt slider, which is going to allow us to control how much of the facial features are burned in and accentuated. But just like the blemish removal tool, this also has a master slider so that we can control facial features and facial contours separately. And then we can blend them in as we see fit with a global slider. So to make this easier to see, I've turned off the even slider. And now if I turn on and off the sculpt slider, and zoom out a little bit. You can see what it's doing. It's burning in the skin on the side, which is giving this nice contoured effect. And it's also burning in some of the shadows around the nose, around the eyes. It's also burning in just a little bit below her eyebrows. And it's doing quite a bit to her lips. So if I zoom out and just turn on the sculpt, you can see we've taken that really flat light, light that's almost too flat in my opinion, and we've started to reintroduce a little bit of dimensionality back into this photograph. If you want even more control over the way your skin looks, they have a frequency separation under textured smoothing. Frequency separation is a really powerful tool that retouchers have been using for years, where you can control both the high frequency, the fine detail in the skin, and you can control the low layer, which is more or less the color layer, and when you combine these two, you wind up with your final image. So I can blur and sharpen the high frequency, and I can also sharpen and blur the low frequency. And if I turn this on and off, you can see we're actually retouching skin without using the blemish tool, and instead only using the high and low frequency separation under the textured smoothing section. Now while we're on this image, this is a great image to show the remove glasses glare, which is underneath the eye setting. So if I slide this up, check this out. Look at that before and after. It has completely removed all of the glare in the glasses and even rebuilt part of her eyelid here. I can see this really being useful if you're a headshot photographer and your lights are really close to your subject and they don't have the anti-reflective glasses. Even though this is something that naturally happens in any photo shoot, your client is almost always going to mention, hey, could you remove the glare from my glasses? And in the past, that's been a nightmare. And check this out. They have a catch light setting here where you can add catch lights to your subject's eyes and replicate the look of a large softbox that wasn't actually used on set. That's pretty cool. Here's another example with more fashion glasses that don't have a true magnifying lens in them. And you can see by using the remove glasses glare tool, we can almost completely clean those up. And you have a lot of options to mess with the overall brightness, the iris, the eye whites. There's just a ton that you can do here. And I think that's the biggest takeaway from using this software is that they have a slider pretty much for everything. So if there's a specific setting that you need to tweak, I can guarantee that Evoto will have it where some of the other software, it might just be a generic teeth whitening or a generic eye brightening. I've not used any software that has this many specific sliders. It's a little overwhelming, but it's also nice that it's there if you need it. Now we've looked a lot at skin and facial feature retouching, but Evoto can actually tweak your overall RAW file as well. So here's a studio shoot that is straight out of the camera. And as you can see, the image is just kind of underexposed and it has a slightly cool white balance. If I come up here to the top and go to color adjustments, I can now tweak my image just like I would in any other raw editing software. And so if I wanted to edit just a straight out of camera shot like this and just tweak a few settings to get it ready to export, I could also do that. Now, this is a great example of a studio shoot where, as you can see, the model has scuffed up my white paper and retouching this would take a lot of time. Luckily, Evoto has a tool for that. It's under background adjustment and they have a bunch of different options. I'm gonna turn on clean backdrop. And look at that, it has removed the majority of all of those marks on the backdrop. Now in this studio space, unfortunately I have pretty low ceilings and as you can see, I have some strange shadows showing up here on the top. If I come down to unify lighting and turn this slider on, look at that, it removes that shadow on the top, also some of that vignetting on the left and the right, and it just cleans up the overall tones on the entire background. Now here's where it gets really wild. There is a backdrop changer 
which is brand new. And if I come here to, let's do gray. Look at that, it has replaced the entire background with gray. Now that looks incredibly fake, why? Because it's also removed all of the shadows. But if I come down here to original shadow and hit AI retain shadows, see what this does. It will add the original shadow from the photo shoot to make it look a little bit more realistic. Now, this seems to be a little bit darker, so I could drop it down just a little bit, something like that. Looks a little bit more natural. And if you didn't have any shadows on your shoot, but you want to add a shadow to make it look a little bit more realistic, they even have an option there for add shadow. <laughs> it's pretty wild. For now, I'm going to turn off their shadow and let's just add the original shadow back. I think that looks the most natural. And instead of going gray, let's go to brown. And let's drop that opacity down just a little bit. I think that background looks great. It's cleaned up. It has just a little bit of warmth. It just looks a little different than pure white. I really like that. Now here's the really cool part. I've spent maybe five minutes removing all of the marks on the backdrop, cleaning up the shadows, changing the background color a little bit, tweaking the raw file, and maybe I've even done a little bit of skin retouching to this image. I can now come down to save preset, title this, select all of the filters, and hit save. And now if I hit shift and select all of the next images in the series, I can either apply that preset that I made or I can hit sync and a photo is going to apply all of those settings over the entire photo shoot. So if you offer a service like you do headshots or you do catalog work like this where you're just doing the same exact setup every single time somebody comes into your studio and you wanna apply all of the same retouching every single time, you could just make a preset and literally have this done as the client is shooting with you. Or if you're making these changes more on a shoot by shoot basis, you could just edit one image like I did here and then sync it across the entire photo shoot. Evoto makes this incredibly easy to do this. So there we go, here's our original image and we have synced all of those changes across the entire photo shoot. How easy is that? And in the case of this image, I actually caught a little bit of the side of my paper but check this out, we can come up here to distractions removal and boom, <laughs> it removes even that. So what a tool for the studio photographer. This will save you a ton of time and not require that you send all of this out to a retoucher. This is pretty, pretty powerful. Let's look at another image and I wanna show you two other things that I do a lot, which is fix hair, stray hairs, and also wrinkly fabric. So this image is straight out of camera and before I start retouching the hair and the fabric, let me show you the AI color that you can do with this. Evoto now has this feature where I can use a reference image, one that I've taken or one that they supply, and I can change all of the colors in my image to more closely match that reference image. So if I use this headshot image that they have, I can dial that down a little bit if I like. So this is a really cool way to just play around with different colors, especially if you aren't sure how to get there, or if you see an image that you really like and you wanna introduce those colors, you can simply upload a reference photo. So if we zoom in here, you can see how many flyaways and stray hairs we have on this photo. If we come down here to hair, we can do some really crazy things. We can add volume to the hair and we can control this both on the left and the right side. And we have the stray hair removal tool here. And look how well that works. I mean, that cleans up so much of the stray hair. What's interesting about this tool is that there are two different ways to control the stray hairs. You have within the figure outline, which would be any stray hair that's going into the face or having any kind of non-background behind it. So if we zoom in here, you can see this is pretty aggressive, but all of these stray hairs that are coming into her cheek and then also down here by her chin, those can be removed independently from the normal stray hairs that might be going beyond the outline. So if I turn the beyond outline slider down, we're controlling these hairs that are here on the gray background, but the within the figure outline, those are gonna be all of the hairs inside of our model. So maybe I wanna remove only the stray hairs on our background, but leave most of the stray hairs inside of our model to make it look a little bit more realistic. I can control both of those independently. The smooth hair slider is pretty wild. This is blurring all of the hair in a way that almost is reminiscent of those hair product ads that you see. So when you see that perfectly shiny hair, this is kind of giving that same effect. The hair shine enhancement, let's see what this is doing. I don't know if you can see this real well on YouTube, but it's adding kind of these gradients through the hair to just make it look even more polished. This is really starting to look like a hair ad. And then finally, you can do some really wacky effects like we could change the hair color altogether. Or if we wanted to go just slightly more brunette, 
Maybe the model has dyed her hair that day. I mean, look how good of a job that does. If I just showed you this image before revealing the secret, I don't know that you would think that the hair color has been changed that dramatically. All right, so with the hair all fixed, let's now deal with the elephant in the room, all of these weird shadows on the clothing. We did not steam the skirt before we took this photo, but luckily we can come over here to clothes and accessories and we can turn up the de-wrinkle clothing setting. And much like frequency separation, they've also created a high and low filter for the clothing. So with everything bumped up pretty high, you can see it's diminishing a lot of the shadows on the clothing. I mean, that looks really good, but at the expense of losing some of the detail in the clothing itself. So if we want, we could remove some of the fine detail and it is going to retain all of the detail in the clothing while still removing a lot of the shadows, creating that wrinkled effect. So this can save you a ton of time, especially if you're in the world of photographing e-commerce and you need to take a ton of different shots of clothing. This can be a nightmare doing this manually. So there you go, just some of the highlights from Evoto. I know this video is kind of long, but I just wanted to show you some of the tools that I've been using because they're pretty impressive. Some of this technology was around two, three, four years ago, but it really didn't work that well. It's exciting to see software like Uvoto really put it into practice and get these sliders to work extremely well to where they're usable now for the average photographer. Before I wrap up this video, like I said at the beginning, if you wanna get 15 free credits and try Avoto for free, go to the link in the description below. If you're already impressed with this software and you wanna start applying this to your own workflow, use the discount code FSTOP to save money both on their subscription service or on their pay as they go credits. Now, let me talk about that a little bit more. As you can see here, Evoto's business plan is they charge per image. So if you download their software, you can play around and do all of these edits on your computer, but if you wanna actually export them and have the final image, they're gonna charge you a credit to do that. And the credits, they range from about 25 cents an edit down to 13 cents an edit if you do the pay as you go option, or if you know that you're gonna be editing hundreds and hundreds of images, maybe thousands of images throughout the year, you can knock down the price per image down to seven cents or even five cents if you sign up for their annual subscription plan. So regardless of what plan you go with, the pay as you go or the annual subscription, I think this is going to save you a ton of time. And for five cents or even 25 cents an image, it's pretty easy just to pass that on to your client, just build it into your billing. And so if you're doing a headshot session and you're just giving your client 10 images, well, paying 25 cents per image really isn't gonna eat into your margin all that much. And if you're doing much larger photo shoots where you're delivering a thousand images and they all need to be retouched, well, that could cost as low as $50 if you do the subscription plan. And honestly, the amount of time that that's gonna save you for 50 bucks, I think is well worth it. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. Never in a million years would I think I would be reviewing this much AI software in the year 2025, but that's the state of the industry. If you're a photographer who's competitive and wants to enter our photo contest, head over to fstoppers.com slash contest. Every month, Lee and I set a specific theme for our Critique the Community, and then at the end of the month, we look at 10 of the best images, and we give away a lot of really cool prizes, things from cameras, lenses, software, lighting accessories, and lighting gear. So head over to fstoppers.com slash contest to check that out. And finally, if you're a professional photographer or you want to be a professional photographer, head over to fstoppers.com slash store where you can check out our full length photography tutorials. No matter what type of photography you're interested in, we have really, really extensive tutorials, some of them going as long as 20 hours on very specific niche areas of photography, such as landscapes, architectural and real estate, headshots, wedding photography, product photography, fashion and studio photography, swimwear photography, and macro photography. There's literally something for everybody, no matter what skill level you're at. And you can use the code YouTube at checkout to save 15% on anything in our store. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you really soon.